Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto Tools and Time .com. Welcome back guys. Back in the shop today we have this 2004 Ford F550. You may even remember this from a few videos ago. I had a, another punch list we had to get done. Put front calipers on it, brake lines. And the one I'm going to cover today is the power booster. This doesn't use a vacuum booster because it's a diesel. So it uses a, a power booster and it works off your power steering fluid and whatnot. And we'll go through that as we pull it apart. However, the main issue with this is that it's leaking on the driver's floor. So if you take this off, you'll see what's going on. That's because the oil is leaking down from that power booster. What I'm going to do next is go in and remove the master cylinder. There's two brake lines. One here. One a little further in the back. I'm going to break them loose, remove them. There's a plug right there. In addition to one more right there. These two lines take a 9 16 line wrench. Okay, once you have the lines removed and the two electrical connectors unplugged, we're going to take and remove the two retainer nuts. I used a 6 inch extension with a 9 16 socket. Deep. Back here, there's a bracket that goes to the one power steering line. You got to slide this towards you like so, and it comes off with a stud. The stud on the opposing side that looks like that one. Brake lines pulled out of the cylinder. I should take and remove just like so. The next step I'm going to do is start removing or just breaking loose the lines. I'm just going to break them loose while the power booster is still attached to the firewall. That way it gives me some kind of leverage. Okay, I got both lines broke loose. What I ended up using was an 18 millimeter open end wrench. Because I couldn't get on this back one here with a line wrench, to be honest with you. I'm going to take and I'm also going to slide this clamp up. And that's just simply squeezing these with a pair of pliers. Alright, I just slid the seat back as far as it goes. I placed the floor mat back inside so I don't get covered with that oil. If you follow the brake pedal up, there's that yellowish cap. We're going to take and pop that off. Squeeze them in and take it off. And I believe there's a little spring clip pin. I'm going to take and pop that out. Okay, once we removed that retainer clip, I just pulled it to the side, it slid off. And as you can see, this brake switch, it pretty much sandwiches the linkage. And then they all slide onto the pin as one. You can see we have four retaining nuts remaining. There's two on each side. We're going to take and zip them out. I believe they're 9 16 Retaining nuts removed. I used that same eight in, or six inch extension with a swivel. Right, I might get a little noise in the background because it's cutting holes. But uh, this should be yeah, ready to come out. Zip the lines off. The lines are removed. What I found helps is if you bring the, the lines to a higher level, they stop leaking. Now we're going to take and remove this power assist booster. Like so. I looked it up online. They have it in stock. I called them up. It appears that it has the front bracket, or the mating bracket that goes to the firewall. Along with this linkage, this fitting, two studs. You can't see the back side of it, however it looks like it has all the components that are here. The only thing it doesn't show in the picture is the rod sticking out the back. A $50 core charge on this, I'd rather exchange it right off the bat. Okay, I'm back at the garage because I forgot my SD card. With the rest of the footage. Yes. I hate to leave the shop without doing at least one thing. And just for the curious minds, it's not that I work with two tool carts. One's a tool cart, the other one serves as like a welding cart slash bolt pin. It just has miscellaneous bolts that come in handy. You'll be surprised. It'll save your day. At the parts store, we found that it didn't come with this linkage, this spring, 
nor this retaining clip. And this is going to get placed down inside like so. Spring gets placed inside next. And then we have this spring clip. It's a retaining clip. You can see it got tweaked a little bit during removal. We don't want to bend them too much over. And when we push this down in, there's a, a retaining ring. Yeah, probably a good idea to wear safety glasses at this point. When it gets down to that groove, it should retain itself in like so. Now I'm going to go inside and start a few nuts. Okay, I got all four retaining bolts in and tight. The little bit of slop in that metal linkage is what essentially is just enough to push the switch. See how it has that little bit of slop before it starts pushing on a linkage? But in between that switch where it sandwiches around the linkage is actually where the momentary switch is at. Alright, so next we're going to take and hook up the lines. There's an o-ring on these. Pop this little cover out. I believe... I believe I can fly. Yeah, I believe I can put this on. And still be able to get the master cylinder on. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to slide it on the stud like that. Just so it's in the right orientation. And then I'll tighten her up. Okay, I believe that's good. Like so. Next, I gotta find where the other ones are. I gotta tuck back here. So next we'll remove this green cap. So what I found for now, an 18 shorty wrench fits in there good. Make sure you're tight. Or straight, I should say. Cut that with the longer wrench. Feels good. Remember there's an O-ring on it. While I can reach down there, I'm just going to take and dry it all off. A little every oil might have dripped. Woo. This doesn't seem like there's very much spring pressure on this clip. I'll just swap that out with a regular hose clamp. Okay, this is another one of those things if you feel the need to replace it. It's probably a good time to. As you can see, this is going to slide into where that shaft is. It should pretty much center itself. Let's move the lines out of the way for now. I'll install the nut on this side. Now we gotta make sure we put the bracket in. On this side, I'm gonna slide it back on the shaft and then install the retaining nut. I know you can't see down in there, but it's pretty straightforward. Okay, we're just gonna go take and run them down tight. Jump right over to the other side. I'm gonna check that with a regular ratchet real quick. Really ain't much to see. Nice and tight. Now we can start putting the brake lines in. Pretty straightforward. Let's tighten in the brake line. I'm using a 9 16 I'm just going to tighten the back one up as well. And the back one's a little bit harder to get to. However, 9 16 tighten them up. Then plug in your two electrical connections. You got one there and one there. Dot three only. I'm going to fill it up to max. We replaced the caliper and brake line on this one. However, you would still need to uh, bleed the system regardless if you remove the master cylinder. You may get away with removing the two bolts and bending your lines out of the way. I wouldn't recommend that. However, if you do it this method, you're gonna to have to bleed the brakes. We're gonna need some power steering fluid, most likely. So we'll get that topped off as well. We're gonna bleed the brakes with the vehicle off, so this could wait. However, I'm just gonna to top it off to the max mark for now. Okay, so we're right at our full mark. I have a couple demonstrations out there already on how to bleed the brakes. What you could do is simply go around once your reservoir is full, loosen up on these bleeders and just let it sit. 
until fluid starts coming out. Once the fluid starts coming out, that's what they call gravity bled. Go around, tighten them all back up. And just do one more at a time if you're all by yourself and let it bleed out. Um, if that doesn't work for you, you have a second hand, you can have them simply pump the brakes and then we'll crack one bleeder open at a time. Uh, let me see if I can gravity bleed this one. It'll take a little time, but you'll just sit here until the fluid starts dripping out just like so. At this point, gravity's taken over. The brake fluid's coming down through the master cylinder, through the ABS unit, through the brake lines, and down to this caliper, filling up the void and then dripping out of the highest point inside the caliper. And this is what you call gravity bleeding. If you go and you do this to each caliper, most times you're good to go. In this scenario, it's a double action master cylinder, just like you'll run into with most modern cars. So going from front to back really doesn't make too big of a difference. Sometimes it's more convenient to get the harder ones first. And that, those are normally the back ones. However, I'm gonna to jump to the back, gravity bleed them, finish up, and then uh, see how it feels. If it feels good, we'll be good to go. If not, we'll do the traditional pumping and breaking loose. Let me give you one demonstration of that. All right, Tammy, you wanna pump it up? And pump it slow. You don't have to pump real fast. Just take your time. All right, hold it down. Do you have a little bit of a pedal? Yeah. While she's holding pressure down on the brake pedal, she wants to follow through with it. You don't wanna let off the brake pedal once it starts dropping. Because once I have this brake bleeder loose, we just want all the fluid to push out. We don't wanna introduce any more air. So as the pedal starts dropping, just follow through with it. All right? Yeah. All right, you're holding it? Yeah. Okay, let up. Once you get the brake bleeder tight, she can let off. Pump it up. Are you feeling the difference? Yeah. All right. Just hold up for a minute. Okay, we went around, gravity, bled, all four calipers. Brake pedal felt good. However, just to be certain, I had her pump it up. Traditional bleed it. Once over, and uh, everything's feeling good. Put the tire back on, torque it to spec. One thing I forgot to mention, guys, when you're gravity bleeding, remove the cap from the reservoir. It just seems to help a little bit. I'm gonna fill this back up to the max. It now has new brake pads all the way around. So this max is truly its max. They shouldn't have to add any brake fluid to it unless something were to leak out for some reason it blows another brake line or whatnot. However, this will go down as the brake pads wear. There'll be room to compress the calipers once again to put new pads on. All right, let's fire this up. Yeah. 